Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are revisiting a subject from about a year ago and then maybe three years before that, and it is a program called B for Artists. Now, this is a very polarizing application. If you're perfectly happy with Blender as it stands right now, this isn't for you. But if you found Blender a little bit too daunting or you didn't like the uh, keyboard-centric approach to it, you didn't like the user interface, B for Artist is there for you. This is basically a fork of Blender with a modified user experience. On top of that, we've also got other improvements such as uh, better documentation. I'm putting better in air quotes, but I have to tend to agree. Using Blender's documentation right now can be a little bit frustrating. So, B for Artists. Let's go just take a look at it first, and then we will jump back. So the entire idea behind this, this is an indie-focused development. So if you're a beginning developer, a visual developer, or indie developer, and again, you find Blender's default experience a little bit daunting, B for Artists may be for you. It's got things here like well, you've got toolbars available here. You have icons. You have all of these various different things, all the panels that are available here. They're all left aligned. There's a very consistent UI experience here. So for example, and it, it's very subtle right now because one of the things is Blender's UI experience from Blender 2.5, 2.6 on got a whole lot better, thankfully. So when Blender, uh, B for Artists first started, the Blender user interface was pretty rough. Since then, it's gotten quite a bit improved, but there are still certain things B for Artists definitely does different. You may find them better. You may not. That is your option. So you can see this is Blender. You're going to see things like we've got the uh, alignment here. The, the value is within the panel. Uh, and you'll also notice there is a missing thing here in this particular version. You'll also notice here, we've got all of the, the, the bars are right aligned in terms of the way things are laid out. And you're also going to notice uh, there is a relative lack of uh, iconography going on. There's no toolbars, no nothing like that. So if you want to take a very mouse-centric workflow, you're going to probably prefer B for Artists. Let's jump back to B for Artists. Look at some of the things that are different here. Obviously, immediately up here, you'll notice you have some toolbars for navigation. Uh, this is actually pretty nice. If you don't have uh, hotkeys on in Blender, if you don't have a number pad, navigation can be a little bit tricky. Also notice over here, there's a Navi menu. So everything you want to do, you can visually do. And this, this for example, I switch to view navigation all the time and try to remember, okay, what is it? Is it shift, shift to posture? I, I, it's hard to remember. You want to go into to walk navigation? Boom, there it is. So if you're brand new and you're trying to figure these things out, having it all in a menu is a bit of a godsend. There's no like going through um, Googling for, okay, well, how do I do this? How to do that? It is all here for you. Another thing that they've done is they go through all of the menus and there's a lot of duplication of menus in the world of Blender. They get rid of all of that. Everything has one menu entry. They also really simplified the uh, hotkeys that are used and so on uh, just to make it more approachable and uh, accessible on the whole. The other thing you notice again is these toolbars. I'm a bit split on this. There's some things I don't particularly like. I don't like all the color, to be honest. I'd rather have a bit less color. You'll also notice in menus, it, it, a lot of the things have icons there. Uh, again, I'm not that keen on the color. I would wish there was a black and white option out there. It does make these toolbars look a little bit ugly, but that's a pretty minor point on the whole. Now, one of the reasons why I'm talking about B for Artists today is B for Artists 2.70 was just released. There's not a ton in that release, but one of the cool things here is they're staying very current to Blender. So they are on par, I think, with Blender 2.92. That means if I come in here and we open this guy up, we'll look at the editors, which again, you'll notice there's icons for everything here. We have the new G geometry node editors that were just added in. So they're very current to Blender. All of their updates here um, have been basically they are live to what Blender is doing. You'll also notice over here, there's little things that they do like this one. This isn't available. You go over into normal Blender, not there. There's no little dot. What this dot allows you to do is use these transforms to do animation. So if you want to set keyframes, you can animate the property right here. If I had the timeline going so I could go forward in time like so. Uh, and then I could animate it up here. So you can use this uh, transform toolbar uh, to do direct animations. It's just little small you know, tweaks that just make it kind of nicer to work with. And again, everything is mouseable. So if you are very mouse oriented, you are going to like this guy. Again, we got all these different navigation options here and so on. So now let's get back to uh, some of these um, toolbars, which by the way, can all be customized and potentially turned off if you don't really like them. So I'm going to switch here into edit mode to show you an example. All right, there we are in edit mode. I can come up here and I could turn say mesh edit on as a set of toolbars. So then we've got 
all of these toolbars available over here that are specific to mesh editing. Uh, a lot of the recent updates, so we got these, these nice dynamic bars that have been added into um, recent versions of Blender, makes some of these features a little bit less desirable, of course, because the UI has improved on the Blender front. It used to be that this was a quite a bit better. You also, again, you've got that consistent layout across the board. So you can see like you've got here, the label to the left, everything is left aligned uh, as opposed to here. And Blender has always been a little bit different in this regard. Uh, again, what you actually prefer at the end of the day comes down to you. All right, so that was a quick look at B for Artists. Ultimately, it is uh, Blender. It's a Blender fork with a different UI on top and a different set of uh, kind of a different approach to things, different way of using hotkeys, a very visual oriented interface. Uh, but I, I still think if you're just starting out, you will get farther with Blend for Artists than you will uh, with Blender. And then learning the Blender hotkeys later on, probably not going to be that much of a challenge, especially because their documentation took the approach of describing the task, not necessarily the hotkeys, the way that um, it is done heavily in the uh, Blender world, which when they changed the hotkeys like they did at Blender 2.0, Eight, all of these old documentation were suddenly completely and utterly broken. All right, so let's go take a look at their homepage. This is B for Artist homepage. It is available at b4artist.de, as you can see right there. Uh, it is a completely free project. This is still open source. They are both under the GPL license. Um, if you're wondering, okay, why would I choose B for Artists and not Blender? they have a breakdown here. Now they say, because we have a better UI. Now that's obviously an opinion-based thing. And it's that kind of comment that will definitely get people riled up that really like Blender's workflow. And again, there is nothing wrong with Blender's workflow. If you look at Blender, you look at Maya, they take a very different approach, but it's perfectly viable to like one or the other, or potentially both. So if you're a very mouse heavy person, well, here are some of the main difference between B for Artist 2 and Blender 2.8X. Uh, an own key map, which is reduced to just the essential hot and the necessarily hot keys and navigation that can be done purely by mouse. Cleaned up the user interface, lots of double, triple, or even uh, more identical menu entries are removed. Uh, extend the user interface. Many tools that were formerly hot key only have menu entries now. That is definitely really nice. And again, where I would really find it, especially starting out, is having stuff like this, walk navigation, fly navigation, view navigation. Uh, finding that stuff is normally kind of tricky. Finding a lot of these things actually is normally quite tricky. Whereas here, they make it pretty darn simple, which is definitely a nice improvement there. Uh, so that was their um, rearranged user interface. Some things are better accessible now. Uh, some are not so much in the way anymore. Uh, colored and uh, as double as much icons as Blender. This one, again, I don't necessarily agree with. I don't necessarily necessarily like the punches of color, especially because Blender itself generally is quite a dark user interface. And especially even if you get in here and you start playing around with themes, almost all of the themes are still, the, the color really jumps out. Really jumps out here. I'm back in the 90s at this point in time. So I do find, I, I kind of would prefer that they had a black and white icon option, uh, but I can understand why some people think color works better. We don't all live in a monochromatic world. Uh, okay, so uh, a color, a configurable toolbar with icon buttons. Uh, we saw that earlier on, the ability to basically uh, add whatever one you want here. And then for each individual toolbar, you can also change what goes on it. So once again, back to the mesh edit, I can go here to the mesh edit and pick which parts of that I want to show. So if I want edges freestyle, I can add that to my uh, toolbar. And by the way, if I want to get rid of it, I can also at any time, we can just, we can get rid of all of the various different things that we don't want, like so. Now, oddly enough, I don't know that I can get rid of the toolbar entirely, which is odd. I can, I can hide the header, uh, but I don't know if I can uh, say, okay, I don't want this. Uh, so anyways, that is that. So we got improved layouts, left aligned checkboxes and text where possible, uh, better tool tips, better readable standard theme, uh, some neat add-ons to improve usability, like reset 3D view add-on or the set dimensions add-on, uh, which you can scale in world coordinates in edit mode. A lot of small details, like not so much confirm confirmation dialogues, a list of the changes available there in the release notes. Uh, so that is it. Now, key thing here is uh, 
what the target audience for B for Artist is. They're aiming at hobbyists and indie developers. Blender is aimed more at the professional. Uh, if you want to learn that keyboard map, there is a ton of power to unlock there. But if you don't want that learning curve, B for Artist might be a much nicer and gentler introduction to the world of Blender for you. Uh, better manual, and they are not bound to the Blender bubble. B for Artist has its own ecosystem, for better or worse. All right, so that is uh, B for Artist. As I mentioned earlier on, 2.70 was just released. There's not a ton of new stuff there. They, they're kind of consistent with what they do. So they, we saw the one, the new um, animate icons were added to the transform toolbox. Uh, a couple more properties were lined up, and so on. Uh, but the big thing here is it brings in brings in quite a new feature from Blender 2.92 Alpha, like the Geometry Node Editor we just talked about, uh, and it's already based on the 2.93 Alpha, which is basically as current as it gets. That part is kind of cool. They are keeping very, very current to the Blender main fork. So it's not like it's falling behind. New features are added there. They're over here in Blend for Artists as well. Uh, if you want to really get into the release notes for Blend for Artists 2.70, I will uh, release, I will link this in the linked article down below. You can see the details of all of the various little tweaks they made on this particular version. Um, and then that manual that we were talking about. And this is actually kind of nice. It's available in a couple of different formats. This is the PDF version open in my browser. What you will notice here, and the cool thing here, since it's a PDF, a large document, I can do Control F and I can search for, and I say I was looking for edit mode. Uh, I can search in it and get what I'm looking for specifically. It makes it much easier to get through the documentation. Another thing you may notice about this documentation is there are 3,163 pages in it. So yeah, let me just give it my search results and let's, let's go to take a look. So yeah, everything is documented. There are, there's a lot here. So that is definitely nice. You want to bring it down. It's a hundred megabyte PDF. Uh, they've got quick tables of, you know, their hotkeys. So everything that they've changed is available here. Every panel is documented. Every screen is documented. So if you're confused at what to do, there's documentation for that. And I got to give them credit here. A lot of open source projects really kind of shy away from the world of documentation. They've jumped all in and embraced it. So that is pretty cool. Uh, so that is B for artists. Coincidentally, if you are interested, the reference manual uh, is also available. You can pull down the PDFs for the specific specific topic you are looking for. Um, it'd be nice if, I don't think they have an online version. I think everything is PDFs. It'd be nice if they did like a web browsable online version as, oh, no, it might be here. Uh, no, that's the edit, that's the actual source code for it. Yeah, I don't know that there's an online navigable version of the documentation. I do like the PDFs. I definitely like that they're searchable, uh, but I wouldn't mind having a web version of it as well. Uh, it may exist. It, it may just be that I don't know where it is. But if you want, the entire manual is downloadable right there, 100 megabytes, or you can download the individual sections uh, from, you know, if you're working on the compositor, you can download the compositor section, or you can download an individual PDF for each particular aspect of that one. So it's been really, really good and solid documentation. So if you're interested in it, again, it's available at beforartist.de. Once again, I'm not trying to say this is better than Blender. Uh, it's going to be better for Blender for some people. I think that's the best way to put it. So if you've ever actually looked at Blender, you wanted to get into 3D, but you found the user interface too daunting, you didn't like the way it worked, or you wished it was more, you know, mouse-based kind of in the approach. First off, you can customize Blender to make all those things work for you, or you can let someone else have done a much deeper job of customizing it with the focus on streamlining, making it easy to use. So if that fits you, you may want to go check out B for Artists. Also, uh, you can go check out their Discord server there as well. I will link that in the article below. So if you just want to jump in, give them some feedback, pop in and say hi, or you got a question to ask, do go check out their Discord server. But that is B for Artists, an entirely, it's again, GPL, um, open source project based on a fork of Blender, and it is absolutely cutting edge current to the newest version of Blender, which is pretty awesome. All right, that's it. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.